Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to discuss data sets as part of Harlow 3. To help with complex data organizational needs, Harlow supplies a data set structure. Now, a data set is similar to an array. It is also a sequence of values. However, there are two major differences. One, in a data set, only unique values are allowed. And two, the order is not guaranteed. That is, when we put things into an array, we put things in an ordered sequence. Things keep get added to the end. And a data set, we don't know. The order is not guaranteed. We can put things in, and the order may change or it may not, and we have no way of knowing that. Additionally, and as I mentioned, only unique values can go into a data set. We can think of it sort of within the metaphor of like a bag. We can put a bunch of stuff in the bag, but unless we go and take everything out of the bag, we sort of have no idea of what's in there. And that's a similar metaphor to a data set. We're just putting things in the bag, and we have no idea what order they're in. We're just things are in storage. To create a data set, there are two macros data set and its shorthand DS. I'll be using DS throughout this extended example. We see here an example of that. I've created a data set containing these values, sword, candle, rusty key, and jade statue. These are in the data set. I have put them all in there and right here we see all of the values together. Think of it as dumping out all of the values within that bag. So the only way to know what's in the bag, what's in the data set, is to take out everything. However, there are ways of testing the data set to see what contents are in there. So as I said, we can either look at everything, or we can say, hey, is this thing in this data set? And there are two different ways of going about that. Individual entries in a data set cannot be accessed. It's not designed for that. We also can't know the position because the order is not guaranteed. So unlike an array where we can use the position to get at some data, or unlike a data map, we're using key to get at some value, we don't know. And so things are simply stored in the data set, and then we can look across to see what it contains. Hey, is this thing in that? Or is this, does this variable contains this value, or is this value in this variable? And the two different approaches use the keywords contains or is in, depending on how you want to write your testing. We can either test if a variable contains a value or test if a value is in a variable. So we see actually those two examples right here. We have the silver key. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense just seeing this text. So let's go look at the code of this. We see over here in creating data sets, I set an initial story variable, notice it has a dollar sign, to a data set using the shorthand DS, and then a series of values sword, candle, rusty key, jade statue. We're just stuffing data into this data set. And remember, the order's not guaranteed, so it doesn't really matter anyway. We're just stuffing things into the bag, stuffing a sword, a candle, rusty key, jade statue, all into the bag. And then we looked at its contents right here, and it gave us the entire contents. Sword, candle, rusty key, jade statue. Well, if we want to add to those contents or see, hey, is a certain thing in any of these contents? We can do that through testing for it. So we see actually right here one additional thing. We can add things to a data set by putting in a data set, a data set and then adding them together. So we see here, I want to add silver key into the existing data set. So I create a smaller data set using DS and then add it to the existing variable right here. Example inventory set example inventory to it that is itself plus an additional data set silver key which adds that new value to the data set so now we have all the previous values plus this new value silver key then we're doing two different testings here the first we're testing if the variable contains a value using the contains keyword so if example inventory contains the value silver key and we know it does because we just added it right before that then we'll see the text we have the silver key. So if a variable contains a value, then we see the alternative or the reverse if a value is in a variable. So if 
the value silver key is in the variable example inventory, then we see the text we have the silver key. So using either example contains or is in, we can test to see if something, if a variable contains a value or if a value is in a variable. So in this video, I have covered data sets briefly and how to use them within Harlow. But why use them? Well, again, we come back to that metaphor of a bag. Sometimes we just want to store things. If the exact order matters, then we probably want to use an array so we can get at the exact position of different data within our structure. If we want to use something where we're looking at a series of keys and their values, you probably want to use a data map. If we don't really care about the order and we really only care about unique values, then we can use a data set. And that's what this video covered. Again, coming back to that metaphor, stuffing things into a bag. We don't care what's in there. We don't care what, what order it's in. We just need to know these are unique things in this bag. And then we test the bag. Hey, is this, is this in the bag? Or does this bag contain this value? And that allows us to, like this example of inventory, stuff a bunch of things in and then test for that or look at all of the contents in one go. Thanks for watching.